Today we're in a backyard that has a brick sidewalk and a patio. Now this has been here for a long time and over time the ground has shifted which has caused these bricks to separate, loosen and really become uneven. So today we're going to replace these bricks with a really nice stone from Vengeance Creek. We've gotten rid of the bricks and we've dug out the area. And now we want to put a radius on our patio and extend it out further than it was. So to do that, we've rented this tiller, which you can rent for about $40 a day to help us get rid of all this grass because this is really tough clay soil and it's hard to dig into. This will make our job a lot easier. Once you have the area tilled, you'll need to dig up all of this dirt and grass and clean this area out as well. We're going to bring this down to the same level as our previous sidewalk and patio. Now that I have this area dug out, I'm going to fill it in with road rock. They call it that because this is what's used as the foundation for the roads. Now remember the problems that we had before with the soil shifting. That's what actually broke up the brick patio and sidewalk. This is going to give us a good solid foundation so that that doesn't happen with the stone patio. Now I'm going to spread this out in this entire area and I want it to be about two inches deep for that good solid foundation. Alright, I've got this area completely filled in with the road rock and now I'm just slightly wetting it down. And now, I'm ready to use this tool, which is a plate compactor. This one you can rent for about $65 a day. But the reason that I wet this down first is so that when I run the compactor over it, it'll give it a good tight compression to make a good solid base. day two of our project. We have the patio area compacted down, but before we lay the stones, what we need to do is set the grade for our patio. Now what I mean by that is we want our stones to slope away from the house just slightly so that the water runs away. So the way that you set the grade is you take a long straight board that will span the width of your patio. I'm going to set this on top of the stone and run it across to this stake and then I'm going to level this board. Alright, this is level right here, so I'm going to mark the stake at the bottom of my board. Okay, now what I'm going to do from this mark is I'm going to make a new mark half of an inch down, which is here and that's going to give us the slope that we need for our patio. I'm going to mark the other stake the same exact way as I did this one. Now that I have both of the stakes marked, I'm ready to run the string line. Tie it around your bottom mark, and then come over here to your other stake, and again, tie it around the bottom mark, which was here, and then I'm going to show you what's going to happen with our stones. The top of our stone is going to sit right underneath this string line and this will ensure that we have the proper slope across our patio. What I'm doing now is a dry fit with all of the stones. I'm laying out the borders first, as you can see I've already done, and then we'll work off of those stones to fill in the middle part. Now this is where it's going to be a lot of fun because actually it's like working a jigsaw puzzle. You just try to find stones that are going to fit together nicely, like these two here. This one's kind of curved, and this one's curved up, so that looks good there. But if you'll notice on the border stones, I've tried to find pieces that have a pretty straight edge so that our border looks nice. All right, our dry fit is down and now I'm ready to start setting the stones. I'm going to work in a small area at a time since I'm working with cement, I don't want to run into any problems. The first thing is to take a bucket of dry Portland cement and lightly dust in this area. Now it doesn't have to be that thick, you just want to cover the top of your road rock, just like this. Then you take the water and wet this down pretty good like this. And 
And now we're ready for the setting bed. Now the setting bed is a mixture of two parts sand to one part Portland cement. And then we added enough water so that we could have the consistency of like a snowball where it just holds together but it's not too wet. This goes on top of our Portland cement. And again, when I get this down, we're going to sprinkle some water on top of this. Put just enough water on top of the setting bed to get it damp. And now I'm going to take multi-purpose thin set and butter the back of my stones. Start with this one. You just want to cover the back just like this. It doesn't have to be that thick, but again, you're just covering all the area like this. Okay, and we're going to set this right down into our setting bed and work it down. All right, once you have this area filled in with stones, take the long straight board and set one end of it on the opposing border and the other end of it on top of your stone. And we're going to check the elevation and remember that we need our stone to sit just underneath the string to have the proper slope. So if it's too high, you can take the other end of your trowel to tamp this down. When the bottom of your board sits just on top of the string line, then you know that your stones are set at the right height. All right, we're several hours into our project, but as you can see, it's pretty slow going. That's because you have to have three courses of cement for each and every stone, but it also takes some time to use your level or your straight board for each stone just to make sure that you keep the slope going down as you need it. Now you can do all of the prep work and even the dry fit by yourself, but when you get to this point, you might want to call in some family and friends to help you out. We've got our technical advisors helping us. This is Brian and he's mixing the setting bed and Jeff is cutting some of the stones for our problem areas. This is day three of our project, and as I mentioned earlier, it's a very labor-intensive project, so it's been really nice having the extra help. Jeff is still working on the side, setting some stones for the side patio, but Brian and I are going to go ahead and grout this area in that we did yesterday. You need to let your stones dry overnight before you grout them in. Now for the grouting step, we've used the same mixture as we did for the setting bed which is two parts sand to one part Portland cement, except this time we added more water because you need the grout to be workable. I'm going to use a float, and when you grout, you want to force this into the joints. It's just like grouting a tile job. Make sure that you fill your joints by forcing this in. Now I'm going to let this sit for about three to four minutes, and then I'll come back and wipe this off the top of the stones. Then we'll let it dry for about 10 more minutes, and as Brian is doing here, we'll come back and try to really clean off the top of our stones. All right, we've grouted to the edge of the house. Now we're going to finish laying the stones, and then we'll come back tomorrow and grout in this side patio. We've spent around $2,000 for this patio, but that's a third of the cost of what you would have to pay if you hired someone to come out and do this for you. The Vengeance Creek Stone itself is inexpensive. It will run you around $3.25 a square foot. Once you're finished with your project, you're going to have a stone patio that not only looks great, it will last you a lifetime.